I'm Stephanie Langston for Y'all Wire in Nashville, hanging out with the lovely Maggie Rose at Third and Lindsley. How's it going? Hi, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Also, it's actually our first time to catch up with you here on Y'all Wire. So you got to walk us back to your backstory of how you made that journey from Maryland to Music City. Man, <laughs> it's... Well, actually, you know, I met you as Margaret Durante. Okay. Which is what I originally uh, went by when I first moved to Nashville. I released a couple singles... Uh, as Margaret Durante and then I went through this big evolution and just kind of grew up a little bit and I wanted to kind of rebrand myself and I had a really great team around me and I put a really awesome band together and I started going by my nickname Maggie and my middle name Rose so we've met before but it's just been a lot of growing up since the last time I saw you awesome well thanks for reminding me no it's totally I like that because a lot of people it's a whole I think new it's you. good to kind of shed some skin and, you know, reinvent yourself. Absolutely. Tell us about this show tonight. It's a special show in Music City. Um, tonight is going to be really fun. I haven't played in Nashville. I played at the Opry, which is awesome, but I haven't played with my band in this kind of high energy setting in over a year. So it's a really fun sort of homecoming show, and we're going to debut some new songs and uh, play the new single Looking Back Now and we might even have a few surprises for you that you'll see tonight so it's gonna be fun and I thought that was that till he got rough and I fought back and when I grabbed his pistol he laughed and said girl you ain't got the guts and looking back now I probably should let him run let's talk about that dark song you know you're in today's Tennessean the yes. headline says that Maggie Rose brings dark song craft know, to Third and Lindsley. I love that title. I was like, whoa, I sound so wicked. I love that. It does sound wicked. And the song is definitely dark. But how do you feel about that being the overall title and feel of your music? Um, I think that it's because I've had uh, songs out like I Ain't Your Mama, which is really fun and sexy and confident. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I had Better out last year, which is a really heartfelt, introspective ballad that looking back now in that context makes a little bit more sense as a story and a narrative and um, entertainment as opposed to me assuming that identity and being that very person that is in looking back now. They're strapping me down and I'm scared to die. I ain't the kind of girl to cry, but I find myself begging God for mercy. My hands are cold as I start to slip. Sodium theopental drips, the room goes black, and I wonder if he heard me. And you recently did a music video for it, and you got to kind of play those roles, I'm assuming. Yes, and it was probably the hardest music video I've ever done. And it's because it was like right here the entire time, very close cropped, and I didn't have a lot of props, and I didn't have any co-stars in the video with me. I just had to really convey the story on my own and show the pretty wide range of emotions that the song talks about, where she's vulnerable at times, she's sinister and vindictive at others, and um, she's a very complex character. You sympathize with her, even though she's a murderess and she's, you know, someone who acts on a whim, but it's always been a fan favorite. It's something really compelling about her that draws you in to the story. So do you kill anybody in the video? <laughs> I kill a few people. On my album, Cut to Impress, people laugh because there's two double murder songs and I actually die. And I don't know that I'll find a song or write a song for the rest of my career where I kill myself off or that has sodium theopental in it the way Looking Back Now does. <laughs> right. Because it's sort of hard to rhyme with and all that stuff. But Yeah, you've been doing this song actually for several years. It is off cut to impress, which you got to kind of showcase your songwriting on. You wrote half the songs I on did. that album. Tell us about the feel yes, of this Yes, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Thanks. Did a little bit of research. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's so many good writers in Nashville. And when I moved here, I was the singer in my community. I grew up in Potomac, Maryland, right outside D.C., and there weren't a lot of aspiring country artists there. And you move to Nashville, and it's just everyone's an amazing guitar player, a singer, a songwriter, and there's so much talent that um, it helped me find my voice. It was very humbling at first, but the bar is set so high that when I made this first album, I really had to be ruthless, like 
the best song wins, regardless of its origin. If I wrote it or if I found it, I wanted the best body of work that I could find. So half the songs on it, I had a hand in writing, and then the other half are just amazing songs that really spoke to me. Like, I didn't have any background. I just heard, like, Better, for example. Uh, Stephanie Smith and James Stroud played it for me, and it was just, like, totally resonated with me and hit home, and I figured, okay, if it can provide this healing feeling for me, then maybe it will do the same for my listeners, and that's an invaluable thing to pass on to someone. Mm, let's talk about a little bit about your time in Maryland. You had a Bruce Springsteen cover band. <laughs> do you ever do those songs anymore now? Uh, um, I, yeah, I do, because with them, they I left the Bruce stuff to them because they have a lead singer who actually even looks like him. He sounds like him. So when it came to covering Bruce... I let them do that, but I would sing like Linda Ronstadt and Mary Chapin Carpenter and Shania Twain and No Doubt and like this crazy range of uh, different genres and artists. And then I started incorporating my own originals. So it really gave me the platform to step out as a songwriter and as an artist and start getting that live reaction that's just the most terrifying and exhilarating thing that an artist can do share their original music and get that feedback from an audience. I recently saw an interview with you. You said Kesha was like your go-to <laughs> My guilty, guilty pleasure song. Oh, um, God, I love her. Who are some of your mentors when it comes to country? Uh, country, I would say Shania Twain was my first concert when I was seven. And I love uh, Patsy Cline. I think she's just got this voice that transcends time. I mean, she doesn't have any... Uh, adulterations of her voice. There's no tuning, there's no effects, it's just pure, beautiful singing. And um, I love Winona. There are lots of women, really. I mean, when I look back on my influences, just in general, there are a lot of really strong female singers. Tracy Chapman. Mm -hmm. So, I think I have to thank my mom for that, because she just always had the house piping with music, and different people, Annie Lennox, like, I could go on. While you're out there plugging away on this album, are you, have you already started working on more stuff? I have. In fact, we're going to play some new songs tonight, and um, I'm really, really excited about the songs that are new that are outside of Cut to Impress because they've become really much a part of our repertoire. Awesome. And we, I saw you have some dates on this calendar coming yes, up. And I know we're going to fairs. Uh, <laughs> yes. I always love fairs. Are there any that you're looking forward to? I mean, we have a lot of really cool dates coming up, especially this summer. Um, we're going to be getting to a lot of different states and awesome. cities. Awesome. We look forward to seeing you out there on the road. Thanks for taking time Thank to catch you. up with us. Maggie Rice.